What's up, Central Illinois? Derek Hayden here. Garrett and I love sharing all the awesome stories about our Central Illinois business leaders. We want to make sure our Central Illinois businesses are protected so we can continue to share all these great stories. That's why you should consider another great Central Illinois company, Pekin Insurance, for your business insurance needs. That's right. You can get all the commercial insurance coverages that your company needs from an excellent insurance company headquartered right here in Pekin, Illinois. Pekin Insurance offers comprehensive business coverage that lets you focus on what's important to you, employees, profits, and peace of mind. Ask your local Pekin Insurance agent about their commercial insurance products or learn more at PekinInsurance.com. You can also contact your favorite podcast hosts, Garrett or myself, Derek, and we'll go beyond the expected for you. Welcome to the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast, where business owners, thought leaders, and community champions from across Central Illinois come to share their story. The Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. Anything less would be uncivilized. What's up, Central Illinois? I'm Derek Hayden. I'm here with Garrett Ulmer. We are your hosts for the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast, powered by Zambu. Zambu is a delicious grapefruit or wild berry vodka-based spirit infused with a Brazilian buzz button. It's smooth, tasty, and leaves you with a signature tingle. Learn more at ZambuLiquors.com. Zambu, taste the tingle. All right, Central Illinois, today's guest is the president at McLeod Express in Decatur, Illinois. Ladies and gents of Central Illinois, please welcome Colt McLeod. How are you doing, Colt? I'm doing pretty good today. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. We appreciate you jumping on here with us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, yeah. we're excited to learn about a, a very um, prominent and well-known business in Decatur. I'm sure a lot of people have seen your trucks on the road, but before we do learn more about your business... I'm going to kick it to Garrett, and we're going to take you through the speed round to get you to know you a little bit better. Now, before we jumped on here, we know you've cheated a little bit, so you've heard some of our episodes, so you got a pretty yeah. good idea of the six questions that we're going to ask, so we're going to see how prepared you are, okay? Sounds good. All right. First concert that you ever attended? I actually had to think about this one, and I believe it was Nelly and Champagne yes. uh, when, I was, <laughs> when I was in high school. That's great. <laughs> He was, he I don't was think we've deal. had anybody say Nelly yet, so yep, that's yeah. awesome. Good deal. Your favorite movie? is actually would probably take most by surprise, but it's actually the movie Blow with Johnny Depp. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Favorite ice cream flavor? I would have to go with chocolate chip cookie dough. Right there with you, man. Not a bad iPhone choice. or Android? Definitely iPhone. Favorite social media platform? Uh, it, a slight edge with Twitter over Facebook. All right. Okay. And why Central Illinois? Well, you know, this is this is where it all started for me. You know, obviously being surrounded by family is big, but uh, really, you know, just having the core of our business and um, and everything um, around it is how we kind of built this up to what it is today. So. Uh, I didn't think I wanted to be back at one point in my life, but uh, here I am and, and happy with it. Awesome. Very good. Awesome, Colt. Well, for the listeners, if you could give us a, uh, a quick, I guess, give, bring us up to speed from, about where you came from, how you got to where you are now, fill us in in the middle and, and just give us the story of Colt McLeod and McLeod Express. Yeah, definitely can. So, you know, as far as the business goes, uh, my dad started this in 1986, and uh, we've always had a family farm uh, that he had came back and, and worked on the farm and, uh, you know, eventually had a few trucks there that, that didn't do anything in the, in the summers and the winters. So he started knocking on doors and, and finding out uh, what we can do with those trucks while they're sitting, while, while we weren't farming. And, uh, you know, for him, the, kind of the rest is, is history. Uh, he always kind of jokes about, you know, used to have a farm with some trucks and now we've got a truck company with the farm. So <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's very cool though. My, both my brothers are on the farm side of the business. Uh, I'm on the trucking side. So uh, we work really well together and, and it's exciting, but you know, I started out uh, washing trucks when I was probably about 13 or 14 years old. Uh, we used to be based out of Assumption, Illinois. So 
started out washing trucks down there and, and kind of working in the shop. And uh, in 2002, we actually moved everything to Decatur, Illinois. Uh, we got to a point where we were running about 200 trucks out of that farmhouse in Assumption. So it was time. Wow. Uh, uh, it was it was crawling with trucks most of the time. So uh-huh. I, I remember the good old days, the farm days, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, when we moved to Decatur in 2002, um, you know, that was when I was just getting into high school. And uh, I worked in the shop. I continued to wash trucks, worked in the warehouse, kind of did a, a tour through every department um, at a very low level, obviously. So um, a lot of filing, a lot of paperwork, stuff like that. But just, uh, you know, kind of learning the business and, and the ins and outs uh, through each department and what made everything work. And, uh, you know, honestly, I, when I left high school, I went to SIUE and uh, didn't think that I really wanted to be back in Decatur. And, and I was pretty confident I, I didn't want to be in trucking either. So uh, I went down to study economics and finance in college, um, met my wife, who is awesome and has really been my backbone to this point. But, uh, you know, I, I took a, did a brief stint in banking and insurance and had some quick success there. Uh, I did some internships and started working full time out of college and really enjoyed the sales aspect of banking and insurance, which I don't think a lot of people do. Uh, but I had my dad in my ear most of the time, uh, you know, talking about trucking and and. I think in his eyes, you know, it's kind of like what's what's going to happen next when I don't want to do this anymore. So mm-hmm. eventually uh, he decided that, uh, you know, he really had been wanting to start a freight brokerage for a long time and, and never really had the, the bandwidth to do so. So luckily with the freight brokerage, all you need is phones and computers. And he said, if you want to start that in St. Louis and, and stay down there, um, he was open to me doing that. So that was big for me because, you know, my, my wife's from Springfield and we had kind of settled in Edwardsville. So, uh, so it worked, worked out well that we started the office down there and really we were kind of an outside sales force for the, for the asset side of the company um, for a few years. And, and as we built up staff and, and gained sales, uh, we really started uh, to own and control our own freight. So, So that was a a very fun time for me. It was in downtown St. Louis. You know, we were young. It was before kids and all that stuff. So, uh, so it was a good time, but, uh, but at at the time my dad had a a president and a vice president in Decatur and had, you know, really tried to kind of uh, take a leg out of the the day-to-day operation on the asset side. And I, and I started over the years, you know, take on more and more um, on the asset side of the business in Decatur and, and uh, towards the end of 2016, uh, started talking with my dad and the president at the time about moving to Decatur and taking on more responsibility and really had decided, you know, I would move to Decatur in the spring of 2017 and mentor under that current president uh, for three or four years and, and spend six months to a year in every department in, in a higher level and, and really understanding the business, not just filing and, and that kind of stuff anymore. So. I moved in 2017, um, right about the time I moved, the the vice president at the time had taken a different opportunity. And then about six months later, the president uh, actually, you know, received a, an opportunity of a lifetime to take a new opportunity as well. So six months into that mentorship, uh, I was kind of thrown to the wolves a little bit. <laughs> Uh, so, which is, you know, we always joke about in trucking, that's, that's the best way to learn. Um, is to really get your feet wet. You know, we had really, since we moved to Decatur, started to diversify a whole lot. And, and uh, this was really built on on relationships, you know, um, not only here in Decatur, but um, over in Lafayette, Indiana as well. And that's really how my dad grew this was um, with strong relationships in the area. So uh, luckily I, I was, and I still am surrounded by just a, a truly incredible team. Um, nowhere, no way we'd be where we are today without the dedication of everybody here. So that's kind of helped me through the way. And I'm still learning stuff every single day. Um, we have about 15 different divisions. So we have all kinds of different pay packages and, and stuff like that. So it's tough to keep it all down. But, uh, but you know, like I said, we, we've got a great team. 
Um, everyone in the building is very dedicated and we've got some long-term uh, staffed employees that, that have helped us throughout the way. So all about going forward now and kind of finding the, the, the next generation and, and who's going to follow that up. So we got some pretty big shoes to fill. That's great. So you talked a little bit about the team there at the end. Tell us mm-hmm. how big of a team you have. And I'm sure a lot of people, you know, they see the trucking and the drivers and the trucks on the road, but tell us a little bit about some of the other departments that are behind the scenes as well. Yeah. So we have, so total employees, we probably have about 400 employees wow. right now. Uh, about 80 employees would be would non-driving staff. So okay. that's, uh, most of that's going to be indicator Illinois, uh, but we've got about uh, 15 employees down in, in the St. Louis brokerage office and uh, a handful of guys at Springfield, Illinois and Lafayette, Indiana as well. And uh, Lafayette has been a big focal point for us the last few years and we've really grown over there. And, and you know, we're close to doing just about as much business in Lafayette as, as we do in Decatur right now. So that that's wow. really booming over there. If anybody's been to Lafayette, you it's, it's pretty easy to tell that. Awesome. So the the drivers are the majority or the the on the road are the majority um, indicator. Tell us about some of the um, positions that are filled in the decatur area. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. And you know I'll, I'll just say we really we really have the best and, and the most professional drivers. I mean, Time and time again, uh, they step up when we need them the most. And, you know, just coming off a holiday weekend, like I said, uh, that's tough in trucking. We do a lot of second and third shift and, and nights and weekends. And, and uh, you know, like I say, time and time again, they, they really outperform our expectations. So we, we really require them to, to provide a high level of, of service and communication to our customers. So, you know, they are really what, what makes everything happen here. Uh, and we we do all kinds of stuff now. I, I mentioned diversifying earlier. Uh, you know, we used to, you know, I mentioned the farm and Assumption, and, and we were running about 200 trucks at the time, all dry van over the road freight. And uh, we're still doing dry van over the road, but we're hauling hoppers and flatbeds and Conestogas and bulk tankers and dump trucks. So we're doing a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, typically what we do now is, is we try to sell our customers the total package. So, uh, you know, we've got customers that were hauling coal into their plants and we're powering the plants and uh, we're taking waste out and we're hauling finished goods out. And so um, typically when, when we talk with our customers, we, we want to be that, that full service provider. And, and the brokerage obviously has helped us do that as well. So that's been a big uh key piece to our growth here over the last few years has been the brokerage. And, you know, I always kind of joke that's, that's where my, uh, my heart was because I, I was down there for five or six years before I moved to Decatur and I still oversee that we've got a great group down there and just moved into a, a bigger and nicer office as well. So, um, so that's uh, the exciting part of the business, but yeah, we do all kinds of stuff in Decatur. We've got about uh, 70 drivers, that are local to Decatur and that just do intra Decatur work all day, every day. So, um, so it's funny, you know, some of those guys might do six to 10 loads a day and, and uh, people will say, well, I saw one of your trucks at the, at the stoplight the other day. And I'm thinking, yeah, (laughs) I'm surprised, (laughs) you know, you get around the kind of the plants and some of this area in Decatur and, and it's pretty frequent. I just hope it's always something positive when they tell me they've seen one. Sure. Now, do you have a defined radius for drivers or do you guys kind of go wherever is needed and you can find a client? Uh, Yeah, so we do have kind of a defined uh, service area, I should say. So around Decatur and Lafayette, we do a lot of hourly and and home nightly work, Um, some sub-regional type work where a driver might go out two, 300 miles a day, uh, but he's getting home most nights every week. Uh, But for our over the road, we basically operate on the eastern half of the u.s so uh, easiest way to i explain it to everybody is if you drew a line from kansas city to dallas and everything east of there is where uh, most of our over the road trucks are and really where we have the most density is between uh, kansas city and new jersey Uh, we we move drivers back and forth through there a lot and we get into the south into atlanta and dallas and memphis and some of the major markets but um you're going to see the the bulk of our trucks are in 
that power five, which is Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Gotcha. Wow. So obviously a family owned business, your dad started it back in the eighties and now it's kind of in your hands uh, to run the show. It sounds like, so being in a family owned business, I'm sure there's some positives and negatives. Are you uh, willing to share some of the perks and maybe some of the hurdles that you face in a family owned business? Yeah. You know, honestly, I, I am pretty spoiled when it comes to that because we really do work well together. I work very well with my dad, um, very close with my brothers as well. And, uh, you know, while the farm and the trucking is not directly related, you know, we do lean on each other and we do help each other from time to time. So I'm pretty fortunate in that arena because I think that, uh, I think very similar to my dad and, you know, we have fun when we're doing it. We both like the sales and the relationship and, and the, you know, kind of the game uh, is really what we're both very into. So I think that's been huge for me. And, and I think it's been enjoyable for him as well um, as he kind of takes a step back and looks at, you know, not only what has happened over the last uh, 35 years, but, you know, kind of what's coming down the pipeline and, as you guys know, business changes all the time. People change. And uh, that's kind of the, the, I'd say probably the challenge or the potential hurdle we have now is, is just uh, that next generation. And, you know, the average age of the workforce is, is in the high fifties now. Mm -hmm. So getting the uh, younger generations into driving is going to be a challenge uh, and, and keeping them there. You know, it used to be, uh, in the seventies and eighties, everybody wanted to drive a big truck. That was just kind of what everybody talked about. That's what everybody dreamt about. But uh, with so many programs out there and so many opportunities, it's, it's, it's a lot tougher to attract that uh, younger generation as well now. So the pay has, has uh, increased dramatically for truck drivers and, and uh, you know, they're able to make a very good career out of it now. And so I spend a lot of my, my time talking to drivers and, uh, I always tell them the same thing is, you know, it's, it's hard for me to effectively management manage it if I don't understand it. So try to get out there, relate to them as much as I can try to ride with them, understand what their, what their uh, habit, what their pain points are and see if we can make it better. You know, our, our uh, culture is very important here it is going to be the biggest key to our, our long-term success. So we really kind of take pride in that family owned and family operated piece of the business. And uh, you know, that we don't ever have dreams of having thousands of trucks and getting to a point where, where we're too big and everybody's a number. So uh, we really try to hone in and, and make sure that's a, a piece of our culture. Yeah. Great. So, so speaking to some younger individuals out there, you're saying, you know, that's kind of something you're trying to diversify and maybe grow is, is mm -hmm. some drivers on the younger side for an individual that's getting started. Do you got, are you guys set up with any programs locally, regionally to, you know, if an individual wanted to get into driving, you know, how does that kind of look? Yeah. So we don't actually have a training school, but what we will do is we go speak to Lincoln land and uh, Richland and here in yep. Decatur and, uh, we will hire drivers in specific divisions right out of those schools. So we'll assign them a trainer and it just depends on their experience level, uh, how much training they actually need. But, uh, but yeah, we'll go talk to these schools and, and you know, like I said, kind of go over the opportunities there and, and let them know uh, what we can do for them, help them get off on the right track. And then, you know, really once they are through that training, uh, for most of the, most of the time, it's about six months. Um, they're pretty open, you know, if, if they, as long as they haven't really torn anything up too bad, we'll, we'll let them kind of branch out and do what they want at that point. Awesome. So especially on the driving side, I'm sure just like every other industry, technology has changed the way you can kind of operate. Tell us about, I know a lot of people don't see the technology that goes into, and myself included, that goes into logistics and driving. How has that changed your business? Yeah, that, that's something we've really had to take a huge initiative on the last couple of years because uh, everything is moving so fast in those trucks and, and the technology is advancing so fast anymore. So 
we've really tried to pay attention on to, to what's going on in our industry. Um, we've joined some associations and some best practice groups to, to try to stay up with the times more or less. Uh, when, you know, when you get in one of these trucks right now and, you know, there's, there's tablets and there's alarms and there's sensors that's going off and, uh, you know, you could, you could see where there it's almost on autopilot a lot of times, and that could be good and bad, you know? So, um, so we've got cameras on all of our trucks. Obviously we're on electronic log devices in every truck. We've got satellites and GPS and everything. And and so it's, it's tough to keep up with everything uh, that's happening in the truck. And, and really over the last couple of years, what I've tried to focus on and tried to work with sales on, is just to, improve the driver experience in itself. So uh, we try not to deliver overnight. Uh, we have no touch freight. Uh, we have mainly one pick, one drop freight. We try to have as many trailers in place as possible. So a big piece of retention and recruiting is going to be that driver experience. So uh, the more we can improve that, the, the better off we're going to be in the long run. Excellent. So Cole, you were referred to us by Andy Shirk over at Beer Nuts. And I think the way that you guys met, you can correct me if I'm wrong, was through some type of a, a group or an association um, mm-hmm. where you guys can share ideas. Are, are you comfortable sharing what group you're a part of and kind of how you learn more about your role there at McLeod? Yeah, definitely. So we're in an organization called YPO. And uh, my dad was in that as well. My dad had a very good experience from that. So um, in 2019, when I was named president here, I joined YPO about six months later, uh, sometime around that August, September range. And I was put into a forum group uh, with Andy and uh, about six other guys at the time. And uh, that's just been a great experience for me uh, personally and professionally. Uh, you know, I spend a lot of times with our with our best practice groups in trucking, where I get together with about a dozen other trucking companies, and and we talk about everything under the sun related to trucking. But um, you know, I get with Andy and those guys, and they're really in the same level in their business, but they're in different industries. And so it's amazing when you get with those guys and you talk about uh, people. And you talk about technology and all this stuff, you know, we're all, we're all kind of having the same issues, but it's good to hear different perspectives and what they're trying and what they've tried and what's been successful and what they failed at. And and the same thing um, personally as well. So it's, uh, it's been a great experience for me. I'm, I think I'm entering my, probably my fourth year into this now. We take the summers off, but uh, we meet once a month. Uh, during the school year and you know we get out and do some retreats and some fun stuff along the way so been a it will be a significant part of my development for sure that's great it's been yeah yeah been cool to follow because andy's part of a a family-owned business as well and to watch to see how some of these central illinois organizations you know the the business perpetuates to the next generation it's cool to see how they've built on what's already established and also implemented some of the newer ideas, you know, like the technology and that type of stuff to improve um, the family owned business. So that's been pretty cool to watch. Um, So Colt, as maybe some listeners um, are hearing some opportunities, what are some, are there any job openings or anything, any kind of people that you're looking for to help expand and grow your business uh, here in central Illinois? Yeah, definitely. You know, we, we have plenty of driving opportunities. Uh, we're always looking for uh, professional drivers and, you know, we we're expanding and we're growing, like I said, so we've already, uh, you know, won a couple pieces of business that will start at, at the first of 2023. So Great. we're, we're starting to put together some packages for, to recruit and hire and onboard for that. So um, there's always drivers in our organization that might do something for a few years and want to change. And, that's been a, a big piece of that diversification for us is that we might hire a guy in a specific position. And, and if he does get worn out mm-hmm. uh, in that position, we, we typically have a few other opportunities so they can move around the company if they like. And, you know, we've got some of these 15, 20, 25 year drivers that have done a whole lot for us and they're just company guys, you know, they just want to, they just want to be able to help and, and make a difference. So that's, it's huge. Uh, we just need more of them. 
but as far as non-driving staff, uh, yeah, you know, we're, we're going to, uh, probably round out our best year ever. And, uh, we, you know, I mentioned earlier, we've got a few managers, uh, around here that are, that have been here 20, 25 years and probably are going to want to take a break here one of these days. So, <laughs> uh, in the process of, of really talking to just as many people as I can and, kind of been a focus of mine to to always interview and to always be talking to people because you, you just never know what happens. And I've already had a few times where I talk to someone over the course of six months to a year before we actually hire them and, and put them in, our, in the right position. So so finding that uh, that next group to come through here, you know, is, is going to be important for me. And I hope that, you know, in time, I'm going to be able to say, you know, when they're here 20, 25 years, and I'm going to say I was along with them for the ride. That's great. So if an individual wanted to be to get in touch and about opportunities in the cloud, who would they directly reach out to? Would it be you or, or someone else individually? Yeah, they they could do it in numerous ways. Uh, they could contact me for sure. Um, I, you know, I have a, everybody's got my direct line here. So I, I mentioned that uh, the other day that I heard that I talked to all the drivers all the time and um, in orientation, we give everybody my line. So I've got an open line, an open door, but uh, our website, uh, you can go see opportunities on there. You can reach out to specific departments through the website as well. So uh, anyway, you know, in person, on the phone, uh, however you can get to us, we're, we're open for it. Good deal. Awesome. So before we hop off of here, we're actually already getting close to the 30 minute mark, believe it or not. Uh, Colt, any last ideas, concepts, shout outs that you want to share with Central Illinois before we jump off of here? You know, uh, I would just say you got to fight for what you believe in. Uh, I, I tell people that a lot around here and uh, I have fun doing this. It, it's challenging and uh, there are definitely some bad days, but uh, you've got to have a, a good support system at home too and, and surround yourself with good people. You know, I really, I really truly believe I've, I've got the best family. I, I mentioned my wife earlier. She's a fourth grade teacher at Mount Zion and, and she's a rock star. So uh, she has the patience of the family for sure. Anybody can tell you that I get my, my lack of, in, uh, my lack of patience from my father. So, uh, but, but no, we've got, uh, we've got a great family at home, two great kids. And, you know, if you can surround yourself with good people, that's going to be the most important piece. Yeah. Great awesome. advice. So you mentioned people can reach out to you directly or uh, go to your website. Can you share what your uh, direct contact information is and maybe what your website address is? Yep. Uh, I will start with my phone number is 217-706-5039. Uh, my email is colt at mcleodexpress.com. And then of course our website is mcleodexpress.com uh, as well. So Great. Great. Well, for all you listeners out there, make sure you're subscribing to the CIBL podcast on your favorite podcast platform. While you're there, please give us a quick review. You can also find us on social media, mainly on LinkedIn and Facebook, and you connect with Garrett and I personally there as well. Until next time, Colt, you have officially been civilized. Thanks for hopping on the show with us. Thanks, Colt. Yep. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash C-I-B-L podcast. You can also follow us on LinkedIn. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. It's the civilized thing to do.